Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about what seems to be the first ever observation and confirmation that there are definitely star systems out there where there are actual planetary-sized collisions happening at this time. With the recent study that, as always, you can find in the description below, detecting, observing, and calculating what seems to be the collision between relatively large planetesimals a few hundred kilometers across. In this case, all of this happening over a period of several years. All of this reported in this paper right here, around a star known as HD166191, a star that's roughly around 10 million years old, located around 330 light years away from planet Earth. And in this case, the observation and the analysis are extremely interesting, especially in helping us understand how various star systems very likely evolve, and more importantly, how planets like Earth have formed in the past. But I guess let's talk a little bit more about the details and what exactly the scientists were able to detect and how they were able to do it. So first of all here we're not talking about asteroids or actual planets. We're talking about what we usually refer to as planetesimals. The large pieces of material that clump together forming various rocky bodies and that then by colliding with one another produced objects like planet Earth. Now this one is probably the most well known in the solar system. This is the object we sometimes refer to as the Arakoth, the object visited by the New Horizons probe a few years ago. With this representing the material that existed in the solar system for a very very long time, but in this case never really materializing into any particular planet. And that's of course because as a lot of these objects collided with various other objects in the early solar system, some of them ended up producing larger planets, other ones ended up producing smaller asteroids, which were basically leftovers. And yet other ones, like Arakoth, ended up getting kicked out to the outskirts of the solar system where they still are today. At least that's the general explanation we have today based on a lot of the observations we've done of a lot of different star systems out there, some examples right here. These two systems are only a few million years old and they seem to possess quite a lot of material representing what we would normally call a planetesimal, an object large enough to then start forming larger planets. But even though we can generally see various protoplanetary disks and various early stars out there, and we can generally see some of the dust and even the material present in those particular star systems, being able to prove that various planets grow through the collision of these objects has always been kind of one of the goals of modern astronomy. In other words, trying to prove that this is a planetesimal that could have become a planet is of course one of the reasons so many observations are done across the entire galaxy. And so several studies in the last few years, especially studies conducted in the infrared light, the ones usually producing pictures like this one, showing us the protoplanetary disks, have been actively looking for signs of various catastrophic collisions between various planetesimals or various planets, which can then help us explain how planets form, and of course help us figure out a little bit more about the solar system and the formation of planet Earth. And one of the ways scientists have been trying to achieve this is by looking for evidence of a sudden increase in various types of dust in the early planetary system, and by trying to find these various debris clouds, which in theory can only be produced if something really large smashes into something else very large. And most of this done using various infrared telescopes, such as the iconic, although now retired, NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope, that for a very long time has actually been conducting a lot of different surveys and looking at a lot of distant stars. In the process detecting at least several events that suggested something, such as maybe asteroids, was definitely hitting other objects in various star systems. One of the first such examples was actually from back in 2014, where there was a clear sign of something increasing the infrared brightness in a distant star system, with the only explanation for the sudden increase in brightening, specifically the infrared brightening, essentially being a sudden introduction of a lot of dust into that particular star system. But now, eight years later, the same team, using a very similar technique, was able to identify something else even more interesting. Not only were they able to see the brightening effect, but they were also able to see the passage of this relatively large dust cloud pretty much right in front of the star, the event that we usually refer to as the transit event. With the transit, or the dimming due to the transit, then allowing the scientists to determine what exactly very likely created all of this dust. 
thus allowing the scientists to calculate the size of original objects and even see in relatively real time how all of this evolved over time and what all this created at the end. So first of all, this particular study looked at approximately 100 observations between the year 2015 and 2019. And so while observing this particular star system for roughly around four years using infrared light, the scientists were able to, first of all, once again detect the sudden increase in brightness, which in this case started around the middle of 2018, and which also indicated to the scientists that there was a sudden increase in activity, very likely an increase in collisions. But around the same time, as the telescopes, both in space and on planet Earth, were looking at the star, they also detected the transit coming from the star itself. And based on the star's parameters and the observations coming from the system, the scientists were able to work out that this wasn't just any type of a transit, this was not a planet. But instead represented a definitive sign of a debris cloud that was basically blocking the star which, when combined with the infrared observations, allowed the scientists to work out exactly what collided with what, and even figure out the approximate shape of the cloud that was produced. And according to these initial observations, the cloud was very likely extremely elongated and at least three times the size of the star. But by observing the brightening using Spitzer telescope, it became more apparent that the debris in this case spread over a much larger area, at least 100 times the size of the star, which would of course indicate a tremendously large cloud and a huge amount of dust that was generated by this collision. In this case, at least two relatively large planetesimals, for example similar in size to the famous Vesta located in the asteroid belt, would have to collide at a relatively high speed. Now this would be a collision between two objects a few hundred kilometers in size, and based on the orbital observations, these objects would be about 0.6 astronomical units away from the star, which is roughly the same distance as Venus is from the Sun. But because this was very likely an extremely high speed collision, and because in this place around the star, the velocity of each of the objects would be about 50 kilometers per second, this would actually be a very, very high energy collision, producing a lot of materials, producing a lot of dust, and evaporating a lot of material as well. And all of this evaporation, and all of the tiny particles produced by this collision, would then result in a kind of a impact chain reaction, where objects will start colliding with other objects and produce even more dust. But over a period of several months, the scientists observed a sudden decrease in brightness, with the dust cloud eventually becoming more transparent and more translucent. And within just a year, most of the dust that basically made the star brighter in the infrared light became more or less invisible. But interestingly enough, follow-up observations from Spitzer telescope indicated that at least double amount of microdust was now present in the entire system, which of course makes this extremely intriguing and potentially raises quite a lot of questions as well. And because this star system in this case is slightly larger and more massive than the solar system, it also presents a pretty good opportunity to see how exactly various types of stars evolve and how certain types of planets come to be as well. Which is of course a really important step in trying to help us understand how various terrestrial planets form and how various star systems eventually create the structure that we detect around the galaxy. In other words, this particular star system is actually one of the most important when it comes to understanding how early star systems evolve. Although I guess, at least for now, that's kind of all we know. It's definitely a system we'll be coming back to as the scientists discover what else is happening here, but detecting a collusion between two planetesimals and actually sort of helping us understand how planets like Earth were created is definitely one of the most important observations of the last few years. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.